Is PHP dead in today's world? If you are a developer, you might have heard a lot of times that PHP is a boring language, an old language, and you should probably stop using it or don't need to learn it or n number of things. So in this video, I want to address why that is right or wrong. Let's find out first and what you should do in order to become a better developer. Should you go with PHP or you should not just consider PHP at all? Let's go. Also, if you are new here, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. I share a lot of content around web, web technologies, JavaScript, full stack, web hacks, and all this awesome stuff. So if you want to stay in touch, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. So before actually coming to the conclusion, if PHP is dead or not, or should you be learning PHP at all? Let's discuss the pros and cons of learning PHP in today's time. Let's start with a bunch of pros. The first thing is that PHP is widely, widely, widely used on the internet. If you just do a quick Google search, you will see these articles where you would actually see these huge numbers. 79.6% in June 2018, 78.9% in November 2018. Although it's closely more or less maybe like 70 65 percent but that's like a majority of web still using php in 2021 on production throughout the internet so that's a huge number of websites still using php and the most i think one of the most contributing factors to this is wordpress because wordpress is the most popular cms online content management system which uses php and a rich ecosystem of plugins so that is there php is used very widely on internet still to date. The second reason, the second pro of learning PHP today is that PHP is getting faster and better. So PHP already has an edge in the amount of shares on the web, right? The amount of people using it on production. But now what PHP is also doing is that it's improving its language and it has just launched PHP 8, which includes the most important change done to PHP, I think ever, which is the just-in-time compiler, which allows for pretty sweet optimizations and speed ups when you're writing a PHP script. But the fact is that PHP has been constantly improving. You can see we have a small diagram which just shows you the performance, which is super worse, 75 requests per second in PHP 5.6, and it has been gradually increasing as the PHP version increases. Now, this is nowhere close to what languages like Go or even Java can handle, but it's an improvement, right? Sites are improving, things are improving. The third pro or the third important thing with PHP is that it has been around for so long, like, I mean, almost like 20, 25 years now, that very high quality frameworks have been developed and have been matured for PHP. One of them is Laravel. I have used Laravel, I think a few years back, maybe five or six years back. And in fact, I don't think a lot of people know about this, but the very first version of codedam.com, which you see archived by the web archive in 2015, this page right here was written in PHP, right? The back end of this very first version of codedam was written in PHP. So I also started with PHP, if that comforts you. Uh, but yeah, I mean, PHP is widespread supported. It has got great frameworks. Laravel is an awesome framework, which comes with so many built-in good practices and security measures that you probably would enjoy a lot if you're writing, if you're a PHP developer and you make a shift from PHP to Laravel. And finally, I have shown in my last freelancing video somewhere, you would be able to find it, that I had got a lot of freelance projects in 2015 to 2018, Time, right and you won't believe but most of the work involved some sort of backend technology and most of that was PHP so PHP is something which is extremely popular because it also is easy to start with and a lot of people which are non-technical just start with it and then eventually need a developer's help right so this is where you would find a lot of gigs which are available for you as a php developer so it's a super common and super required thing in the freelance world as well and plus i mean you have wordpress right so anytime you want a customization or somebody's site has broken i mean wordpress has so many wp config files and wp admin files which people if they mess up they cannot really log into their dashboard and so on so it's php all along in the web and the freelancing world and yeah i mean that's that's a pretty solid pro for using php or learning php in today's time so what is the con of using php or learning php in today's time well the first one is performance 
PHP suffers from a bad performance compare, compared to languages like Node.js or Golang. Why? Because it is fundamentally architectured in a way where it has to run a different process for every single request, right? If you're using Apache with PHP, you know how it goes. Like you would have a different process handling every single individual request. This is bad in terms of performance and PHP has been a slow language in quotes basically for a long time, right? So if you're trying to write script which needs to be computationally expensive or you know, you know that the server would be used by millions of people and would get thousands of requests per second, it's probably not a good idea to go ahead and start using PHP right away. But yeah, except for performance, I don't think there is any major roadblock or major thing which you should bother or you know just worry about because if you take an example of security that should be handled by the framework like laravel if you are using a proper framework for that if you are worried about design or system practices again that is handled by frameworks and even till certain extent for speed php 8 brings in jit so that's an improvement plus what i also want to say here is that you probably would not be writing a website which is receiving thousands of hit per second right if you are receiving that then you have bigger problems than choosing just a language so yeah i mean for the most part i don't see any major roadblock personally myself if you even start to learn php as a backend language when you're starting off because it is simple to start it is easy and for the most part it will allow you to just start working with some sort of backend technology right sure you can see this article is a bit dated so it's 2017 and the number was 80 percent then it was 79 then 70 probably by the time you're reading or you know watching this video it's probably around 70 or 60 percent but it's still a huge number right and it is declining which is fine but even if you pick PHP today it would probably not be wrong to say that it will be relevant even after five years or eight years or even 10 years from now. So it's not a bad thing that you're a PHP developer. I mean, you would see PHP developers making tons of money and other developers just complaining how bad PHP is. So make sure you realize that. So now the question is, when I started using PHP back in 2015 for CodeDAM, why did I shift to Node.js? And the answer for this is pretty simple actually, because I was trying to work full stack on CodeDAM. I wanted to develop the front end and I wanted to develop the back end and because I was running this as a YouTube channel, I wasn't thinking a lot in terms of building a team or starting a company or, you know, just segregating responsibilities for front end dev, back end dev, so on. Even I was learning at that point, a lot of new things. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to do both things, right? I wanted to do front end and back end, which is essentially full stack. And what I observed was the more I learned JavaScript, the better I was becoming in Node.js as well, which was a language which I was also learning on the side. So what I eventually figured out that there is a huge context switch cost when I'm working in a JS code base on front end to the, you know, the back end code base on PHP and so on. And what I felt was eventually that I was more comfortable with JavaScript and working as full stack compared to just a back end guy or a front end guy. So that led me to just make the switch from PHP to Node.js. It wasn't something which I did because of performance reasons or, you know, security concerns. But yeah, I mean, this was just purely because I wanted to have a single tech stack I can focus on, a minimal tech stack, and build a lot of good code out of that. With that being said, I do have a full stack learning path on CodeDAM, which allows you to pretty much learn all the technologies which I mentioned, not PHP, but Node.js here, and become a full stack developer of the technologies I have used personally to build CodeDAM. Links are in the description. You will find this learning path being upgraded and adding more content basically every single week. So you can buy one-time access, you can buy a membership, whatever feels right to you, you can go ahead and do that. But yeah, all the links will be in description. So the final answer, is PHP dead? No, it's not dead. It's actually declining, which you might think like it's dying, which you might be true as well, but PHP has got a lot of time to revive itself. I mean, who knows that PHP 9 changes the complete architecture and, you know, just surprises everyone. I don't know like what will happen, but it is possible because PHP already has the leverage it needs. It has the attention. And if all I have to do is switch from PHP 8 to 9 to get all these benefits, which is, you know, imaginary benefits of uh, high performance and high reliability, I believe like the curve could even go up 
in the coming times if php becomes better and better but yeah if you were shying away from learning php because you learned some bad reviews on online on the internet don't trust everything right in my personal experience both in terms of freelancing and working with php it is an easy language to start with it helps you understand a lot of parts of the back end and uh, it's worth it i mean if you just want to start for fun it's worth to start with php if that's all you wanted to know that's that should help you just take this decision as a yes that you should be learning php so yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you liked it if you did make sure you leave a like and subscribe thank you so much and i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon